there's a lot of ups and downs this year, especially in my life. There were some things that we've lost, some things we've gained, some friends we lost, some friends we gained. We lost some members. We gained some members. We lost loved ones. Some of us lost titles. Some of us gained titles. Some of us gained new positions. Some of us lost positions. Some of us did some things that was good, and some of us did some things that were not so good. But the one thing that I had to do this year, I really had to trust God this year. Because there were some times in my life to where I was like, Lord, why am I not standing up? What's going on in my life that I'm not worthy to stand up? And the Lord had to rebuke me. Because he knows what he's doing. But, you know, have you ever got to that point to where, well, you know, I've been living so many years, and I think I know myself a little bit. I think I can do this, but it's not what God's will is. But you still want to push up against it because you think your way is better than God's way, but you fail every single time. Have you noticed that? When you push against God, you're not going to win because God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. He tells us in Jeremiah. He knows, our, he knows us, and he has a plan for us. The thing is, are we going to get on board with his plan or are we going to try to do what we want to do? And when we do what we want to do, it's a failure every time. If you, go, if you listen to game shows and when someone loses, you hear an awful sound like, wah, 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 or ah. Uh-huh. That's what God is telling us. Ah, stop. I need you to turn around. Some of us found out that we have stuff in our bodies that we need to take care of. Somebody, some of us found out that we were healed from some things. But God does things for a reason. He wants the trust factor to come up. He wants us to trust him even more. And that's what he's been teaching me this year in 2018. Hey, what I need you to trust me. I got you. Let me steer your ship. Let me be the captain of your ship. I sing a song that's called, I Hear God. And in one part it says, billows may roll, storm clouds may sail. My anchor holds because God's in control. We have to be able to let him. And the title of this sermon is, The Steps in Trusting and Waiting on the Lord. Amen? Proverbs 3. If you will go with there with me. The Steps in Trusting and Waiting on the Lord. Proverbs 3. Isn't God amazing? Yes, he is. How he could take something as messed up as me and give me an opportunity to stand up before his people. <laughs> Sometimes I want to say, Lord, why did you pick me? Amen. And the word of God says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about the neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. You may be seated. The writer of Proverbs is telling us the steps in how we can trust God. First of all, we need to know his law. Anything you do, that you get, even when you're getting stuff through the mail that you have to put together, it comes with instructions. And we have to follow the instructions in order to get it put together right. Some of us think we can skip the instructions and do it our way. I've tried that several times with, with stuff putting together, and I always end up with extra pieces. And then later on, I find out that that was some of the most important pieces. But after you've done something for a while, you still think, well, I don't need the instructions. I can get through this. That's how we are with God's word. We get a little bit of word in us. We get a little bit of study, and we do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and we think, oh, we got it now. 
But when we found out that the Bible says we must meditate on his word day and night, that's the everyday thing. We must pick up his word and read it because if it's not in us, how can it come out of us? So we have to not forget his law. He's trying to tell us that this will be a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. It'll help you out in times of trouble, in times of, sit of situations where you think that things aren't going right. You turn to the Lord. Turn to his word. Open up his word. It has a, pr it has a so solution for every problem. But we try to handle it on our own, don't we? Because we think we got this. We think, okay, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm Haywood. I can handle this. And I'm six foot eight, 307 pounds. Can't nothing hurt me. And then you find out that if a little rat runs across my room, I'm screaming like a girl. Because I don't like rats. I never did, never will. There'll be a dead one laying in my floor until someone come get it, I'm telling you. I will not touch it. But, you know, but that's, that's how I'm built. But the Lord tells us also, he says that, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. In the old Bible times, they used to have frontlets and bracelets to remind them of the word of God. Our frontlet and bracelet is the word of God. We must bind it in our heart and keep it around our neck. In other words, we need to keep it close to us. We need to be able to get in this word and understand it and, 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 and ask God to break it down for us. Because I hear this so many times. Well, you know, I don't really want to read, the, especially the King James Version, because I don't understand it. All these these and thou's and this and that. I said, well, who created wisdom? He said, God, okay. So if God created wisdom and you believe in God, don't you think he can break it down for you? It stumps them every time because they don't know how to answer that. They do, but they don't want to because they want to use an excuse. You know how we can find them anywhere. Pick up an excuse. But we must try that. It says, so shall down for our favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You notice it didn't say man before God. See, when you want favor and good understanding, you need to have it before God. God is the one who we need to be put first in everything we do. I don't care what a man thinks about me. I want to have a good reputation, but I want to please God first. If I'm pleasing God, then my reputation will speak for itself. Because if you're doing what God wants you to do and understanding how he wants you to live your life, you're going to be well pleasing to the Father. And that's what we want to be. That's what Jesus taught us when he came down on earth. He taught us that we should be well pleasing to the Father. Because the Father is the one who gives us life. And he gave us eternal life through his son, Jesus. So we must be able to understand that when we are walking this walk, when we are talking this talk, when we claim to be Christian, when we claim to be Christ lovers, Jesus freaks, whatever they want to call us, people are watching us. When they find out you are a child of God, they're watching you. They want, especially this time of year, they want to see what you're going to do. I shock people when they say, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Well, I don't celebrate that pagan holiday. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't. That's not me. It's not Christian. What do you mean? It's Christ's birthday. I said, well, prove it to me. Show me in the Bible where it says this is Christ's birthday. And show me where Paul or any of the apostles talked about celebrating his birthday. They can't answer that. And then once you break it down to them and show them in Jeremiah and Isaiah, because I did this to, with my cousin. My wife and I did this. And afterwards, she was like, yeah, okay. A couple days later, her tree was going up. She was doing the same old thing. But that's how people are. Because it's tradition. It makes them feel good during this time of year to give. They call this the season of giving. When you're a Christ, this should be given every day. Jesus said it's better to give than receive. He didn't say it's better to give on December 25th and then receive. He said it's better to give than receive. So we must be ready to give our lives for this gospel. That's what he's talking about. We got to give ourselves. Because when we pick up our cross daily and we bear it, that means we're going to look ourselves in the mirror and say, okay, I'm not very good at this. So God, can you help me with this? But some of us will not do that. I have trouble with that. 
I have trouble with, with, I know my weaknesses, but letting them go, that's hard. Because they're stuck in me. But I have a God who can take that out of me if I allow him to. I'm trying to encourage you today that God can take care of you if you wait on him and trust in him. Amen. Then it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. That's one, if y'all know me, that's one of my favorite verses. Because we have to be able to not think like we think anymore. Once we become a Christian, once we give our life to Christ, it says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Just think if Jesus was as selfish as we are sometimes. Just think if God treated us like we treat him sometimes. We wouldn't be able to handle it. We wouldn't be able to move forward in this life because it'd be hard. But God is loving. His mercy, his mercy and his grace. He loves us so much that he sent his son so he could teach us how to walk this walk, talk this talk, and to trust in him. But when, we, when our wheels start turning, when a problem comes up, we try to figure out everything and every way how to work that problem. You heard the preacher say when he started praising in his kitchen, praising in his living room, praising in his car, and then he just put his hands up and said, Lord, you take it. When you do that, you'll be surprised what happens. Well, some of us will. But God will take it. But pressure, we let pressure get to us. They say pressure will bust a pipe. Do you want to be a pipe that gets busted all the time? Or do you want peace that passes all understanding? And the only way you're going to get peace that passes all understanding is if you turn your life over to God through Christ Jesus. Allow him to rearrange you. Change your mindset. Because the things that we've been trying, they don't work. I'm telling you. I'm a perfect example. God will sit you down. God will say, okay, you're not stepping up to the plate where I need you to be. He'll go around you and put someone else in that position. He'll do it. You know, I, I heard a preacher say, just because you're not there is not going to stop the monkeys from swinging in the trees. Because some people think the sun don't rise unless they show up. Some people feel that way. So I used to be one of the people. Hey, it's not, it's not, it's not it until Hay was there. When Hay would comes, oh yeah, now it's time. Come to find out, people having just as much fun when I wasn't there. Just as much. But but some of us still got that mentality that it's all about me, especially our children. Our children think the sun rises on them and sets on them. They think they can't do no wrong. And then when you try to discipline them, they want to get, oh, oh, why are you so mean to me? Oh, They mess up. They do the wrong. They get in trouble. And they start crying. I've never understood that. I messed up when I was little. And I used to try to beg about, about not getting the whooping. I still got the whooping. But, man, sometimes, if you know you done ate some cookies, you got crumbs on your fingers, you got crumbs on your lips, but you said, no, I didn't eat any cookies. You're lying. Evidence is there. And then when you try to lie to your parents, God, you know, God put a mechanism in us. We know when you're lying. I used to try to figure out, how did my mom know I was lying? I'd be on the phone. She'd be in Texas. I'd be in Kansas. Boy, stop lying. <laughs> how she know I'm lying? Because And then when I got kids, it was like, ah. So just wait, kids. When y'all have kids, I can't wait. I hope the Lord lets me see that. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. This is, this is key. We have to acknowledge that God exists. The Bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But it's, it's impossible to please him without faith. But we first, we must believe that he is God. We have to believe that he's the one that the sun and moon rises on. He's the one that created all this. He created us. He created our brains. He created our, he knows the number of your hair. Some of us are follically challenged, but he still knows that number. Amen. Amen. God is, he's amazing. He's all-knowing, all-powerful. 
He's God. And he doesn't need any help from any of us. Some of us think we can help God out by telling, well, God, when we're praying, Lord, if you could see fit, if you could please help me. I really like that car over there. And I want to claim it in Jesus' name. You're naming it and claiming it. When all you got to do is go out, get a job, pay your bills, and trust that God will help you get that car. You'd be surprised how much God can help you when you allow him to be roam free in your life, in your mortal, in your body, and in your being. Amen? It says, be not wise in our own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know, God created evil. When you tell people that, they're like, how can God create? I said, because he created everything. If life was all hunky-dory roses and stuff, why would we follow God? if no tragedy or no trials or no temptation ever came our way? Why would, we ha- why would we want to serve a Savior who gives us everything we want? Kids, that's a lesson. You're not going to get everything you want. You may get some of your needs, but you're not going to get everything you want. Some of us grown folks think we need to get everything we want. But God's not like that because he knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. Some of us right now, We'll never have a lot of money because God knows when we get it, we're going to do the wrong thing. So we got to be able to be trustworthy. Not only do we need to trust God, but God needs to trust us in certain aspects of life. We need to fear the Lord. We can't be wise in our own eyes. Some people think they're so smart, so beautiful, so wise. When they walk in the room, they're the smartest person automatically. Instead of allowing God to humble yourself, become a servant, and understand why God is up here and we're down here. The Bible says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. We are beneath him. We are lower than him. We're his servants, and we must treat it as such. It says, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You know, my mother used to eat chicken bones. Because of the marrow inside of it, marrow. She said it helped to live longer all this time. But if you read a study on marrow, it's, it's the life. It helps you live. It gives you life. It says, health to thy navel, marrow to thy bones. That means it'll give you life. It'll help you get through this if you trust God. If you allow God to happen to be in your life. It'll do the things that you want it to do. Then it says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruit of all thy increase. Tithing. When you're working the job, you must tithe. I'm speaking from experience. If you don't tithe, even if you're not here, it was mentioned Sunday. Some people think that when they don't show up, they shouldn't pay their tithes. That's not true. If you want a curse to be put on you, don't pay your tithes. God will curse you, but I, I know. He did it to me. I wasn't paying my tithes. I was so-called borrowing money from God. You can't borrow money from God. You, you'll mess yourself up. You will. Believe I, I will. I got told, was he supposed to be doing such and such? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I got told, well, your finances are cursed until the Lord says so. Can you imagine hearing that? It's like, Arr. I went down to 5'8 real quick. But it was my fault. The lesson learned. You have to tithe. You have to give your offering. It says the substance of thy first fruit. If you know you're not going to be here, you know we have a P.O. box. Most of y'all know where Bishop and Sister White live. Y'all can drop it off. I'm telling you. It'll help you out because you're, what you're doing is you're stifling your blessings. God will withhold the good thing from you. It says he will withhold no good thing from you, but, but there's an asterisk to that. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, he will withhold some things from you. But you got to be able to move forward. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. It says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That next verse. It tells you why you should do it. Because he will bless you upon blessings upon blessings. 
You know, some of us think monetary things are blessings. You know what I call a blessing? Most of the time when I'm getting on the highway, it's a clear path. I don't have to wait. I'm in the acceleration lane. And why do people slow down in the acceleration lane? I've never gotten that. It's called an acceleration lane for a reason, because you're supposed to speed up. Some people are slowing down. And they don't know how to use their signal. Some people don't even use a signal. But anyway, this is the thing. We, we need to be able to, to, to move up forward, because once we can do these things, God will send us blessing, press down, shaking and overflowing. He'll be able to give it to you. And sometimes your blessing will become when someone new comes in your household that you wasn't expecting to be there. I know eight years ago, we got a blessing. We got two boys that we wasn't even expecting to get. But we got them. And God blessed us with them. Because I've always wanted sons. I prayed and said, Lord, how, how come I can't have sons of my own? And he gave them to me. Sometimes they drive me batty. They drive me crazy. But hey. I pray for that. Amen? So they say, so be careful what you pray for. But, but, but I'm not sorry that I pray for that. I'm glad that God did that. It's growing me up. It's helping me out, keeping me on my knees. Amen? They'll, your children will keep you on your knees. If they not, they should. Amen. It says, my son, despise not the chasing of the Lord, needs to be weary of his correction. God will get you. No matter what people say, God will get you mess up and you know better a lot of all of us in here know better we know when we're messing up and when god gets us it's like woe is me why is god getting on me why is he doing this because you messed up but some of us will never admit it you know some of us don't have the gift of repentance that's a gift some of us will never say sorry to their spouse. Some of us will never say, I forgive you. Some of us will never go and say, I apologize. And they know they're dead wrong. They just think it'll, it'll go over. They'll never say nothing. And, it, it, and then it's lingering. And then you're wondering why God is withholding something from you. And you're wondering why God will not move forward in your life. Because you can't stand up and be a man or a woman and admit when you're wrong. I'm sorry I'm wrong. It's just as simple as that. We act like that's going to drive an ice pick through our temples if we say that. That's how some of us really act. Instead of apologizing, we'll hold stuff in. We'll hold grudges. We won't forgive people. You know, forgiveness will make you sick. It'll make you sick in your body. It'll give you physical ailments. It'll do all kinds of things. But we must forgive, and God, he's going to chasten you. 